Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in Orlando, Florida, um, right downtown. And this is an older home that has been uh, rehabbed and real nice inside, beautiful. But they've got a sunken living room. And of course, what that tells us is that they've got water intrusion. And let's take a look at what we're gonna do here today. So as you come into this house, you can see it actually steps down about three inches. And the floor, is quite low it's actually below grade when we got here so as we backfilled we left the soil at the floor level so we took a lot of soil down um, got the footer tile inside there really nice um, you can see I'm not sure why they made this little step but the rest of the house the floor going into the kitchen going all the way back to the bathroom it's all sunken it's not raised back up and as you come into the bedroom where their problem was was over here in this corner and they had water coming up through that baseboard and along you know right at the floor level so basically what we've got to do is dig down along this foundation we're going to take out all this sod is way too high the ground level is way too high here this is a monolithic slab and it is frame construction so the sill plate is actually below grade and what we need to do, of course, is to waterproof the foundation. And that involves putting in the French drain. We're going to use gravel perforated pipe and easy flow all along this wall. Over here, we'll put a sump pump right in this area here because they've got an outlet already here. That's perfect. The, plump, the, the pump is 110 volts and it plugs directly in. Our discharge line is going to go up and over this drain field. This is an above ground drain field. That means that the septic tank, you know, it's got a sump pump. It lifts, the, lifts up the septic water and dis distributes it out through this drain field. Real straightforward project. We're also going to do the front wall and you can see why. The, the mound, this water, everything is going straight back up underneath of there. Even the drain field is leaching itself back up underneath the home. So, so you know, typically started. when you find an older home that um, was flipped, you're going to find a lot of problems. And where we're at right now, this area here is where we want to put the sump basin. Again, because we've got power here, but we've got sewer, we've got water, we've got irrigation, we've got uh, irrigation control lines, we've got power. All of these things are right here. And what we're finding more and more of is how they tried to solve problems um, so they could sell the home. Here's a piece of wood, it's been buried underground. Um, and they used that because probably the foundation had broke and they used that to form it up and they poured concrete down through there. Half of the problem why they're getting water through there because that joint where this new concrete right here meets the old concrete, I'm sure that water is just pouring through there but it did level the house. So, you know, you get one apple or you get the other. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is a tough spot. If you're doing this yourself, you just gotta go slow. I mean, you can see Matt just taking out a teeny little bit of soil at a time because we really don't know what all's down there. We don't want to break things, so we just have to go really, really slow. Sewer line actually comes out of the house and it runs all the way back to the back back here right past chance where he's digging and it's definitely in your way so we have to use the little shovels and you can see the sewer line coming back here that's going to the septic tank which is right there that's that mound and you'll notice all these alarms over here this is the pump the aeration system of that tank so there's another line from the tank that pumps it just like we're doing and it pumps it out to the above ground mound out front. Very confusing, a lot of things are going on here. Um, if you do it yourself, you're gonna learn a lot about how all these systems work because you're gonna uncover them. And it's real important to know all these things. That's why you hire a good contractor. They can definitely take care of this. Okay, so pretty much got this wall excavated. And yeah, our trench looks really narrow and that's because We've got the sewer line right here. And what we're gonna have to do is do gravel perforated pipe. We will wrap that. 
but it's really tight right here. You can see the sewer line kind of veers away, um, and we've got to stay, you know, below the floor. Remember, there's this, this floor is actually sunken inside, so it's quite deep, and this ground is way above the floor, and that's really the problem. But we're going to give that water a place to go by putting in the footer pipe. Some people call it a French drain, but it's the same thing. We're giving that water a place to go. As groundwater rises, it'll go into our system and be carried away over, over to a sump pump over there behind the uh, AC and be lifted up and sent out to the street. So the biggest thing that homeowners need to remember when they're digging these footer foundation lines is to find that water line. Remember the other video I showed you and all the videos, the first thing we do is go find that water shut off because if you hit this line, you need to be able to shut that water off. This one, it appears to be galvanized, a very old home, probably built in the 50s. This is a galvanized line, and it would be very difficult to fix this, no matter who, call a plumber out here, whatever, very difficult to, to fix this. You can see other lines coming across here. These are irrigation lines, I assume. We really don't know where they're going. More irrigation lines. Some other things that we find, here is a footer, and you can see the post for the fence right here, but, there was probably a wall here at one time. Luckily, this is at the right depth and we're okay. We can probably go across it. Otherwise, we have to jackhammer it out. A lot of things you're gonna find as you're digging, um, more than you can imagine. So take your time. It looks like Chuck's almost got this trench completely done. And we're about ready to wash this wall off and get the liquid rubber up there. There are lots of kinds of um, liquid rubber is what we call this. But what this actually is, is blackjack number 57. It's called rubber coat. And it is a fiberglass rubber premium damp proofing product. And what we do is we put it onto the foundation. It can cover block, it can cover the actual footer. It could cover any kind of wood product too, but it works best on the masonry, anything that's concrete. And again, it's just one part of sealing that foundation. The real way to move the water to solve the problem is to get that footer tile down at the footer level and make sure you're below the floor. Sometimes that's difficult to do here in Florida because things are very, very level. Okay, so it's time to set up the Zoller M98. And if you guys are having trouble finding these, uh, send me an email. Um, I can send you to somebody that you can buy them from. We don't buy them from that person. This person's in Chicago, but he does ship direct. Pretty good price. Um, of course, we get them from you know, Zoller, but let's go ahead and take a look. When you open up your box, you've got your instructions. It's also your warranty card. You can scan it online, register your pump, these pumps are heavy, so be prepared. Remember, this comes with a three-year warranty. It's really a great pump. And <clears throat> anyways, let's go ahead and start setting it up. We've got the female port threaded. We've got a male inch and a half adapter. It screws into the port. You don't need to wrench it down. You just need to get it on there nice and tight. Tight as you can with your hand. Only takes a second. Next, we have a small riser. That riser will sit here and what we want to do is get the check valve on here. Remember, you need a check valve. Check valve only allows water to flow one direction, okay? So when you put the check valve on, as the pump kicks on, it sends the water up and it cannot come back down through. This is important because we don't want that water, we're, we're lifting water up, we don't want that water to come back. Check valve sits on there. We're gonna tighten that up with our handy dandy Black & Decker, but first we need to drill a 3 16 inch hole for pressure relief. Real simple. Pressure relief because the pump can kick on and be dry, it could just push air. Remember, there's water sitting at the top, so it could become airlocked. This allows that 
airlock to disappear. Yeah, some water will spit out of here, but it's so minute. The pump is so powerful. This thing pushes 60 to 80 gallons a minute. That's like two or three trash cans full of water every minute. So that goes pretty quick. Now we're gonna tighten up the check valve. Let me get that. We use a 5 16 inch nut driver. And we're going to tighten this up just as tight as it can. But let's go ahead and glue it first. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're using an OD single step. If you see that, a lot of people say, where's your primer? Well, it's already built in, you guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> Anyways, we put that on both pieces. Push it in. And that's set. Perfect. Now we're gonna set the check valve on there. Remember to look at your arrows. They tell you which, the direction of water flow. Set it on. Use a 5 16 inch nut driver or a screwdriver, either one. I like to use these handy dandy black and deckers. This is a two speed, very good drill by the way. Just put it on there as tight as you can. Perfect. This is ready to go down in the pit. Remember there will be another riser that comes up from here and 90 out everything's underground so there's another riser but we'll put that on inside the basin so they started digging this pit but we got to go a little deeper so let's go ahead and pull this out a lot of things going on down there but we'll get it You know, it hasn't rained here for quite some time, and you can see this soil is really wet, <clears throat> holding a lot of moisture. We've got ground wire that's kind of in the way. We're just gonna bend them out. Okay, looks like we're getting to the right depth. Let's go ahead and set that basin in there. We're using a sewer basin this time because this area needs a little bit stronger basin. Nice. Okay, so now we're ready to drill the inlet for the footer tile. We're gonna come way down here. We need another one over here. That'll take care of our two inlets to bring the water into the pit. Next, we're going to plumb the discharge where it comes up. We're going to go right through here with a two inch hole. Let's get that set up. So you can see, haven't glued it yet or tightened the clamps from the check valve. 
we have a small little riser just enough to accept this 90 every pit is different um, as you set it up this is just how this one's coming out this this little riser could be much longer or if you're in a basement it could be quite long but here outside we just want to keep it underground so we'll line that up and then we're going to slide a piece of inch and a half pvc through our two inch hole and glue all this up and this is our discharge as it goes out footer tile is actually over here and there's the hole for the footer tile right here now I'm going to go ahead and glue that little riser, or sorry, I'm going to tighten up the clamp. Just as tight as that drill will make it. Then I'll glue this piece up. Good amount of glue on both pieces. Remember, I can move my pump wherever I want, so, and I can also readjust that 90, or the no hub, to make it fit perfectly. So now I'm gonna slide a piece inside here and we're set to go. So you can see we've got it all plumbed. <clears throat> pump, there's the cord that's gonna come up to the power. Check valve, riser to the check valve. 90 it comes out and it turns and then we'll plumb the rest of that all the way out over the mound to the street now we're just finishing up a little bit more liquid rubber we're not going to remove this board because it's cemented in here but we are going to go ahead and paint over it um, get some more of this grass off of here and things but uh, we'll paint over that with the liquid rubber and also right up onto the top of this uh, pour that they did the big problem here of course is that the sill plate is actually right here and the level of ground was right here so water just poured into this foundation so we're finding lots of you know problems here on this foundation pretty normal as we excavate you'll find the same take your time expose what you're digging because you don't know what it is until it's exposed um, kind of have an idea we've been doing this a long time but there's so many things that previous homeowners do uh, trying to fix a problem and of course it works but it's not to code and there's a lot of problems there so take your time as you dig and let me show you some of the things we're finding so some other things that we're finding you can see this piece of particle board which is just totally rotting away and they kind of use that to help shore up the original concrete and then they poured another footer across that and there's lots of water that's rising up and coming through underneath of the sill plate. The sill plate, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. If you can see my hand, the sill plate's right there. That's wood. And definitely this was needed to be done all along the foundation. So it's about 98 degrees here in the shade and we're just about finished. Let's take a tour of, of what we've installed and go over it with you so you can see. A lot of work, um, four guys, four men, took us about four hours, four and a half hours, and the job's almost done. We've got about another hour, a lot of cleanup um, in this job, mostly because it's a confined space. Take a look. Starting out here at the discharge, you can see what we did was we brought the inch and a half, adapted it to three inch, and we used a grate and we secure the grate with a screw because it's under pressure. That pump really puts out the water. Lines about eight inches deep, crosses the top of the septic mound. We're actually hitting the gravel on the top of the septic mound. This is the discharge line of the sump pump. Footer tiles began over there in that corner, come around the wall, comes into the sump basin. We had to kind of move away from the wall here. That's why we're using just the uh, pipe with sock on it. Like I said, there's applications for this. Uh, we'll put some more gravel in here to help the flow, bring it into the sump basin. You can see the sump pit. Pipe had to go around this air conditioning pad because it's been over poured. It's actually quite thick. Um, couldn't get underneath of that, so we had to go around. Footer pipe comes down this wall. At the downspout, it actually changes to solid pipe. We don't want to send the roof water into our system, so it's solid pipe from there around until it goes into 
the sump basin. What I'm referring to in confined space is that you see the fence, you see the house. It may not look confined, but you know, we're putting soil out here and sod, and we're actually having to walk across that. So it's very confined. As you walk across your soil, it makes it much more difficult to put things back together. But we'll, we'll get this all cleaned up. But this is what I'm calling a confined space. This one's not bad. You can see the big mound up there by the gate where the sump basin went in and around the corner. Anywhere there's a corner, there's always gonna be a lot of soil. And that made it really, it's gonna to be tough to put it back. But with this many guys, we'll get that back and get it nice and cleaned up. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Thank you.